Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I want to give you some tips on how to create the illusion of reality in your paintings. So not necessarily photorealism, but believably real. I'm going to show you some of my tips based on this piece which I recently had to create for a client with quite an unusual composition. And I'm going to show you some tips on how to make something that doesn't exist look believably real in your painting. I'll also throw in some of the old masters which I like to do in my videos as they've inspired me a lot. Looking at all sorts of art has inspired what I do. So I hope that you enjoy this. Please do hit the subscribe button here on YouTube to show me some support. Also I have a Patreon channel which I'll link to in the description below. The finished piece firstly is on pastel matte paper using soft pastel, my favourite medium. It's 19 inches square so it was quite a lot of work to get through as there's lots going on. My client asked for a scene with a stag in it. Simple I thought until he mentioned the other creatures taken from an old tale about the most ancient creatures of the earth. So you'll see the raven to the left where I've placed him in a tree. And my final idea was to include the salmon as a more subtle shape within the trees. This composition came about after many attempts. Uh, some of my early ones had rivers in it where you could see the stag crossing a bridge and the river with the salmon underneath. But all of these ideas seemed to get very complicated and I eventually landed on this idea. I remembered a beautiful autumn scene that my photographer friend Robert Malone had taken. I asked if I could use it for the background. It had the colours I wanted, the branches to put the raven on and the possibility for some distance blur or a bokeh background. I already had my own stag and crow references and I only really needed a rough outline of the salmon. I use Photoshop to play with these ideas as it's easy to scale things or make or undo changes very quickly. The main priority for me when I'm mixing photo reference is the lighting. The light is coming from the right in the background, therefore it also needs to come from the right on the deer. Or he could be in the shadows under the trees, but I wanted sunlight hitting him. So I can believe that there is enough of a gap in these trees to his right allowing this patch of sunlight to catch him. The crow, however, he definitely needed to be in the shadows over there. So with the lighting matching in my photo references, my next priority is perspective and scale. I wanted the stag to take center stage, but once you start making him too big, the leaves he's standing on start to look too small. These are all things to consider if you want to trick the viewer into believing your imaginary scene. Similarly, the crow is up high on a branch. I can't simply take a crow reference from low down on the ground and just stick him up there. I want to see his legs from below like I would from where the viewer is. So start really looking at your photo references and if you want to try and mix them together, make sure that you think of those three things, lighting, perspective and scale. Another way that I like to create the illusion of reality is in my blurred or bokeh backgrounds. I have so much fun with smudgy painterly time on these backgrounds, but I feel like they really add to the illusion of reality in my work, as they tend to mimic what we see in real life. Using the crisp focus of the stag helps direct the viewer's first gaze. Our own vision works a little bit like this. When you look at one thing, everything around that in your peripherals is more blurred. So when I'm looking at the piece before I start, I try to think of how I can just make this tiny strip in focus. And a bit like the effect that you get in a pop-up book, the deer should really stand apart from this busy background. And it was for this reason that I could successfully hide that sneaky salmon up in the trees. I decided to put him in the blurred out of focus area so that our eyes wouldn't hopefully look immediately to him. And that leads me on to talk about detail. How much detail do you need to put in to create the illusion of reality? Well, I'm going to show you some examples now to show you that the answer is not much. 
So this is the first painting that I want to talk about. Uh, it's by John Singer Sargent. And this is Carnation Lily Lily Rose, one of my absolute favourite paintings of all. And I just wanted to show you the beauty of this painting from afar. Just how real this little scene looks. But then I also want to show you when we zoom in, this painting is just so beautifully done. Typical sergeant fashion where you don't go into crazy detail where it's not needed. He does create crisp edges on things so it's not a complete blur. But there's a lot of mark making going on and it's really so loose even the little girl's hair here. Yet when we stand back from this it's as real as anything you can imagine. So I absolutely love this piece. So I also wanted to mention this painting from Russian brothers Alexei and Sergei. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce any more than that. But I really like these painters. They worked together on several paintings and I love the looseness of this when you're up close to it. A uh, beautiful use of colours to depict the light coming through the little girl's dresses and on the other dresses the sunlight hitting it from the side. Just perfect use of tonal values and using so much colour to describe what they're seeing. And it doesn't have to be neat, so this is my point. It can be um, lacking in a lot of detail once you're up close and still give a really realistic impression from afar. So the final one that I want to talk about is this beautiful John Lavery painting. Again, the Impressionists always inspire me for just how loose they can make their painting and yet still capture something of reality. I'm especially fond of interior scenes and I've seen this one in person in the Ulster Museum in Belfast and it's quite large but what really caught me was when I was across the room it looked so real and detailed and the closer I got the more I could see the artist's paint strokes and the, the roughness of the brush and the canvas. Really not a lot of detail when you get up close and I just love how the Impressionists manage to do that with their style. So I just wanted to mention a few of these looser paintings to show that it's not necessarily detail that will create the illusion of reality. You can create reality without any detail at all as long as you obey all of those things that I've just mentioned, your colours, your values, light and shade, perspective and scale. And finally, this is the scanned version of my piece. I want to show you something as it's easy to think that my work is more detailed than it is if you only ever see it online and reduced in size. I used the warm sienna pastel mat, which I've allowed to show through in many places. What looks neat from afar, you can see it's not in some places. Where I can, I try to let bits of the paper show if it helps create the texture that I want. In other areas, it's 100% coverage where I want nice, smooth gradients of colour. When painting leaves, it really depends on how big their scale is in the painting. So don't forget to always think of the scale. Thankfully, these leaves could be made with one or two good heavy marks from my pastel sticks. On the ground, however, because they're closer, I had to put a bit more effort into their shapes. But it's still pretty loose and painterly when you compare it to the detail that's in the photo reference. The main thing that helps the illusion of reality in all of the examples that I've shown you is colour. So be a slave to the light and the shade and check your values often. But I have lots of other videos here on my YouTube channel to help with colour theory, composition, all the things that I've been mentioning which are important in this video. But I hope that you've enjoyed seeing some of my thought process behind this one in trying to create a believably real but imaginary scene. And I hope that some of these tips help you next time that you're mixing photo references. So please do hit the subscribe button here on YouTube before you leave and also consider checking me out over on Patreon. Thanks very much for watching and until next time, happy pastling.